Ah, Tekken 8. What is it? Where does it come from? Today, we will explore this question and many more. <laughs> On a serious note though, uh, today I put a, together a little list of five uh, tips and tricks um, that I hope that you guys will find useful. So before you jump into the comment section and be like, I already know all of these tips and tricks. What do you think? I am a scrub or something. Just be aware that this list is like mostly geared towards new players and beginners and stuff like that. So these are things that uh, a lot of people will know about and most likely even if you are a new player some of these things you will probably know about as well um, but a lot of uh, it's also something that is not obvious to people starting out uh, this game or starting to uh, to learn this game so um, and I've even seen on some of these I've even seen high level players who are not aware of uh, specific uh, mechanics or uh, rules of the game here so um, you might still learn something watching this who knows uh, but yeah, that's the kind of video we're showing today. Uh, five helpful uh, tips and tricks, or so I hope. Um, you, can, you can go give me uh, the feedback on that, and maybe I'll do another video in this uh, style at some point in the future. This is uh, just a couple things that I have not seen a lot of people talk about, or some of them I haven't seen anyone really go into detail on yet. I'm sure some have out there, but I, ca I can't watch every video. Um, so I hope that you at least some of these you will find helpful. Uh, but yeah, let's just, uh, without, without further ado, ado, let's just jump right into it, I think. Alright, so first up today, we're going to be talking about the rules of Down Forward 2s. I chose this as the first topic today because it's something that I've seen a lot of confusion on. It's something that people often have questions about in my comment section or in my live streams. Um, so I'm going to explain it in great detail today. Um, and it's also something that is very important to understand, actually. And I've seen people, even at high level playing, fail to understand uh, the rules of the, the downfall 2s here. So basically, downfall 2 is a 15 frame mid launcher. And there's a couple different ones. We're going to take a look at all of them today. Um, but the basic rules of downfall 2s is that if a downfall 2 15 frame mid launcher is safe on block, like Laws here is at the minus 7, then it will not launch. A crouching opponent. It will, of course, launch uh, anyone on normal hit, but it will not launch a crouching opponent, as I will demonstrate here. You will get this weird little animation right here instead, and you'll be plus four in Law's case here. Now the frames will wear, vary a bit, as we'll see. This one is minus nine. Law's was minus seven, but since it's still safe, it will still not launch on a crouching opponent normal hit. Now, Azucena is a whole different uh, case. If she's minus 13 on block on her down 4-2, and therefore she will launch a crouching opponent on normal hit. Same is true for a character like Jack. He's minus 14 on his down 4-2. But since it is unsafe, he will be able to launch a crouching opponent. Now, the reason his is minus 14 and not 13 or 12 is because Jack has a lot of range on his down forward 2. I believe it is the big, the longest range of any down forward 2 in the game, and the most might be the most tracking as well. And that's the um, balancing decision around his down forward 2 that it should be minus 14 instead of 12 or 13. On most of what the ones we're going to look at today, they're going to be minus 12 or 13 if they would launch a crouching opponent. Now, Reyna is the only exception to this rule. New addition to Tekken 8 here. She's the only character in the game that has an unsafe down forward 2 at minus 12 that does not launch a, crou a crouching opponent on normal hit. As you can see here, she'll be plus 2 uh, only on hit. Now, Eddie is another uh, weird little exception. He has a single hit, uh, the, the most punishable single hit down forward. Uh, so, his is down forward 3. This one has a lot of range as well. This is the only one, single hit one, that is launch punishable on block at minus 18. But because it is it is so, of course, it will still launch a crouching opponent. Another rule is that if you have a double hit 15 frame uh, mid-launcher, mid then uh, in, in like as a substitute for a down 4-2 like, like some characters have, that we're going to take a look at, a look at here, um, the first hit will always be safe, but the second hit will always be launch punishable. And Claudio, of course, is one example of this. Minus 15 on block on the second hit. 
but of course it will launch launch uh, both hits will be guaranteed on normal hit uh, even on a crouching opponent same with Leroy minus 18 launch punishable on block but if you get caught docking by this move you will of course be launched and same is true with the bears as well There you go. So I'm, I'm going to show you a bunch more examples, make a little uh, compilation here and uh, just sit back and enjoy and take notes. Now, most of you are going to probably know this one already, but this is a beginner's guide and this is something that is really important to, to understand. We're going to talk about sidestepping. Sidestepping, of course, insanely important in this game. And what you need to know about sidestepping is that uh, your stepping is inverted on the opposite side. So depending on whether you prefer playing on player one or player two, when you switch side, you have to, you have to invert your stepping uh, accordingly. So when you step in this game your your character so for example i prefer playing on player one side uh, on the left here and your when you do so your character's chest will always face towards the screen and their back will always face away from the screen stepping towards your back side that's stepping left stepping towards the screen towards your chest that's stepping right and when you are on the opposite side on player two side the, the same thing still applies, but on player two side, as you can see on Kasia here, his uh, back is now towards the screen by default, and his chest is away from the screen uh, by default. And I will demonstrate here with uh, Kasia's Hell Sweep here. Um, so Kasia's Hell Sweep, you cannot step or sidewalk right. He will catch you every time because it tracks to right to his right side. But you can sidewalk left. This is how you're supposed to deal with this move. Is the only way you can you can step or sidewalk this sidewalk left now if we if we switch positions you will notice that now we have before we had to step away from the screen like so and you will find that when we're on player two side we will have to step towards the screen to to sidewalk the same move you'll see if we try to step away from the screen now we'll get hit by the tracking and now if you step towards the screen 
we can successfully sidewalk the hill sweep. So that's something that's really important to understand, the fact that stepping is inverted on the opposite side of uh, where you play. Okay, next up I want to talk about the fact that you cannot block when you are in a key charged state, which is to say that anything your opponent does against you when you are in a key charged state is an unblockable. If they throw you, it's a counter hit throw as well. So uh, you probably know already that when you key charge, you gain automatic counter hit properties. But a lot of people have seemed to have missed the information, uh, which is why I have included this on the list today, that the downside of this is actually that you cannot block when you are key charged. This is a balance thing. So let's, let's take a look at it here. So right now, I'm just neutral guarding against uh, the electrics here. If I key charge, however, I will lose my neutral guard. I cannot block the electric anymore. And even if I try to actively block blocking by holding back, I will still get hit. This is because the electric now becomes an unblockable. And this is to balance the fact that uh, you get automatic counter hit properties when you are key charged. Because with automatic counter hit properties, it means that if you have a low launcher or another like really strong low, like sidestep free on counter hit with law, you can just run up and get the, the free counter hit, right? With, uh, which it would be way too strong. So to balance this fact, they made it so that when you are in a key charge state, you cannot block at all. You have to commit. That's the mind game here. It also means that your opponent gets to counter hit launch you just as easily as you can counter hit launch them. So again, this is probably not something that's going to completely change the, the way you play or anything, but it is something that is quite important to be aware of, especially if you like to do key charge setups and that kind of thing. You need to be aware of the fact that you are now in a very a very vulnerable state. It, it's, not a, it's, it's not just a um, face value, um, what, you, what would you call it, advantageous position for you to key charge uh, and get automatic counter hit properties and then force a mix up on your opponent. You are actually just as vulnerable in that situation as your opponent are. So have that in mind. When, when 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 you do key chart setups and, and stuff like that. Something to be aware of. Now, there's a very high chance you're going to know about this next one, but, but it's fairly important, so I'm going to mention it anyways uh, and explain it to the best of my ability. So, basically, in Tekken 7, certain uh, airborne attacks could be parried. Hop kicks, uh, most hop kicks could be parried. Flip kicks could be parried. Low... Uh, uh, airborne attacks could be parried like can cans and all that stuff but in Tekken 8 they made the change so that no airborne attack can be parried anymore at all and this also extends to low uh, airborne attacks um, which would be for example uh, Asuka's can can it cannot be low parried anymore as you can see from my inputs here I'm trying to low parry it because it's a it's an airborne move you cannot low parry can cans anymore you have to block and punish them now same goes for King's down back four, showing a couple examples here. This uh, attack connects before he hits the ground, so he is in an airborne state. Um, so you cannot low parry this anymore. This, you, you used to also be able to low parry this in Tekken 7. Um, and it used to be the best way to deal with this attack because it puts him in a position where you, you kind of have an awkward uh, punishment here because while standing punishes won't connect on the ground here, at least not for law. Uh, so you have to find an, an alternative uh, punishing method on this move now, since you can't low parry it anymore. Also, low parries gave a full combo in Tekken 7, um, which is also why I don't understand why they completely removed um, the ability to low parry low airborne attacks in this game, because um, it, it it's the low parry combo has been greatly nerfed. That's a whole other topic. Um, another example here I'll show you. This is one that a lot of people uh, <laughs> don't know about, uh, but up, Law's up full 3 plus 4 is actually an airborne low. It looks as if he, like intuitively, it connects while he's on the ground, but this actually does count as an airborne low. As you can see from inputs here, you used to be able to low parry this in second 7, but you actually can't anymore. You have to block and punish this. Now, blocking and punishing this was always the best uh, way to do it anyway, 
but yeah, just be aware you you cannot low parry this uh, anymore. You have to block and punish it, and so it is with a lot of uh, yeah, with basically every low airborne attack in this game, you you cannot low parry them anymore, um, therefore you have to block them. Now, lastly, I want to talk about throw reversals. Now, there is a difference between a throw break and a throw reversal. When you break a throw, basically what happens is nothing happens. You none, neither you or your opponent will take any damage. You will reset neutral, most typically, depending on the throw break. But that's like the general rule of thumb. When you reverse a throw, you will actually damage your opponent. And the vast majority of throws in this game cannot be throw reversed. But there is a couple that can, and I'm going to show you two examples today. So one example of this would be King's down back 2 plus 3. This is one where he puts you in a leg, uh, leg grab. He will first take damage um, fr from the initial throw right here. And then he will like twist your leg again, dealing even further damage. So you could call this like a sort of a chain throw. It doesn't really have a chain throw input. It's just a down back 2 plus 3. Uh, but you can actually re reverse this throw by pressing 3 plus 4 at the exact same frame as he breaks your leg uh, on the ground. So this is a just frame throw reversal. It is not easy to do, trust me, especially online, but it is possible. I have done it before online, but uh, again, this is very niche information here, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. So again, you have to press 3 plus 4, which is also like a very unorthodox throw break. But again, we're not talking about a throw break, we're talking about a throw reversal. But that's the input, 3 plus 4 on the exact same frame as the king player snaps your leg on the ground. And if you do it correctly, you will reverse the throw. Now mind you, that you will still take the full damage of the throw, but you will also damage the king player on the throw. And it will look something like this. You will turn around this funny little animation and snap his legs right back. Let's uh, play that one more time. There you go. KOing with that is so funny as well. Uh, another example. <laughs> another example here is Yoshimitsu. Uh, quarter circle forward two. Now, this is not a just frame input or anything. This is fairly easy to do. This is just a normal throw break, actually. But it is, you can reverse this, this throw. A lot of people aren't aware about this, actually. So basically, Yoshimitsu's quarter circle forward two is this uh, throw right here. It has a very unorthodox uh, throw animation. Uh, a lot of people don't know that you can actually break this throw, uh, but you can. The thing is that when you break this throw, nothing extra really happens. So on, on a successful throw here, he will grab your face and he will siphon your health. If you notice uh, Yoshimitsu's health bar, it flashes green, indicating that he is healing. And he will heal the HP that he is uh, siphoning from you. You will lose your HP, of course. And if you break this throw, now, again, you wouldn't be able to tell from the throw animation because it's so unorthodox, but this is actually a 1 plus 2 break. And it has a normal break window. It's not a just frame or anything. It's fairly easy to break once you know how to do it. Um, and if you break it correctly, 1 plus 2, then the same animation, like, there will be no, not really be any indication that you broke the throw other than his voice line will change. He will go, normally he will say like, ha, ha, ha. And he will do another voice line if you break the throw. Um, and the animation will still play out like normal, but instead of him siphoning your health, you will actually be siphoning his health. Like this. That's what it looks like when you break this throw successfully. You will reverse it and siphon his health instead. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you found at least some of these tips and tricks uh, useful or informative in some sort of way. You're gonna have to go and let me know. Um, and uh, also do let me know if you wanna see me do another type of video like this in the future. Maybe I'll do another five tips at some point once I, I, I I find something that I would uh, find worth sharing with you guys. But yeah, other than that, I hope you, you found it useful. And uh, as always, have a good one. I'll see you soon. Bye.